Parliamentary sovereignty, we are actually unsure at this moment whether the very same people actually believe that Parliament should be sovereign. The, the greatest damage to the principle of parliamentary sovereignty um, which this country has experienced was not membership of the EU, it was the 2016 referendum which has yep. done enormous damage to the constitutional um, uh, processes and structures and legitimacy yes. and public understanding here in the of UK. decision making into our elected officials. Absolutely. Yeah. Um, the, the real enemy of parliamentary sovereignty and the UK constitution was, was the Brexit. 2016 yeah. referendum and the Leave campaign. Yeah. Um, I, think, I think that's another key point about the, the, well, the, the argument that we have to make if there was a second referendum or a general election, but also the position that we've got to be very clear about to yeah. ourselves, regardless of the outcome of this whole process. And this is something that I mentioned last night at the Fringe event, you know, where the, the mask is slipped yeah. from these Leave campaigners. Yes. Um, we, we know them for what they are. We, we probably knew what they were for a very long time, yeah. but, but now the world can see them for what they are. Yeah. They, the, they are the a bunch of people. Of fallen away, the moderates have fallen yeah. away, and the hardcore that yeah. still keeps running, you see exactly what they're getting excited about right now. They, they are getting excited about the prospect of, of inflicting upon this country a, a ill-defined, confused, but still totally dangerous, hard right, political, economic, social, <coughs> cultural revolution. They, 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 they believe that EU membership held them back from realizing these these weird hard right dreams yep. they see EU withdrawal as the opportunity to inflict that type of revolution upon the country um, and, and we should remind ourselves that, that the correlation between the leading leave campaigners and climate change, change denial, denial is, yeah. um, and equality legislation, privatize the NHS. Wor workers rights, destroy yeah. the NHS, finally yeah. dismantle what remains of the welfare state, hard right deregulation of the economy these people are deeply dangerous. They yes. are deeply yeah. dangerous people. Um, and I think we also need to, to draw attention to, to, to the idea that you may have been promised all of these things last time around. You may have heard lots of sweet words, yeah. but actually this is the real face of the Leave campaign. Yes. And these people are, are right to transform your country in a yes. way that yeah. the, I think the majority of people in this country would find pretty horrifying. Yes, and, and they could never sell this before. But if you drag someone to, into a Brexit landscape, then these kind of things become a necessity in order to save the country. No. You actually force it as a necessary route to go down the hard deregulation route no. as, as a solution, no. because otherwise you, you, you go under. It's, it's our way to survive because those horrible, wicked foreigners wouldn't give us the brilliant trade deal which we wanted from them because sure. they wanted to punish The punishment narrative no. comes in. It's very, very fertile ground for no. the population right as a fuel to all these aggressive and it's it's outright aggressive visions yeah. this this isn't love and yeah. peace people yeah. Yeah. So it's, it's interesting. Um, the, the, one of the one of the things I no noticed in the Salzburg summit, I was really genuinely taken aback at this. Even uh, a couple of my very good uh, Remain pro EU horrified friends who look yeah, at what's yeah. happening and think, what an awful mess this is. It, 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 they listened to Theresa May's statement after Salzburg, yeah. and even they got a little bit into the whipped up artificial nationalistic rhetoric yeah. that all yeah. oh, Britain's been insulted by the foreigners, yeah, that, yeah, you know, yeah. that they set out to humiliate our prime Even minister. though we sent them a broken checkers <laughs> so that they could reject it, so yeah. that we yeah. could say all of that stuff. And it was a useful reminder. Yeah. It was a useful reminder that it, 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 it's so easy to whip up nationalistic yeah. fervor and fear and uncertainty and play on it to achieve yeah, your ulterior political objectives absolutely. and that's something we've got to be really careful about. And just a last thing because I see we're, we're pushing to, to half an hour, just a last thing, someone said to me last night that um, uh, no one has worked as hard as the mayor of Liverpool here, Joe Anderson, in actually going to the EU and getting support and getting funds for Liverpool because back in the 80s I believe it was Patrick Minford, who was now the guy with, with all the deregulation ideas, he was all for, what was it, managed, um, I don't, it wasn't managed deterioration, managed, um, sort decline. Of managed decline, that was the phrase, managed decline of Liverpool, Liverpool had failed, sod Liverpool, manage it, manage its decline, and that's how it was meant to be dealt with.
but Johannesson and others said we can't get funds um, from the local region, we can't get funds from our national government. They kept going to the EU and said, well, regional development, help us out here. This is how we would like to invigorate this great city with its great heritage. And they got it from that third layer. What kind of society do you want to be in? A mutually supportive international one or the kind of vision that Patrick Minford, who also supported the poll tax, has been rolling since the 1980s and is getting a new wind of life now through these hardcore Brexiteers. That fundamentally is a choice about how we want to be and live as a country. Absolutely. Right, uh, we'll, Absolutely. End, end on that. we'll end on that. We'll end on that. Uh, <laughs> so thanks very much to Michael Duke. We 